Wow. Mega cast filler. Florida. In a way, compared to many places, this is the land of the giants. We have just about every type of creature you can imagine. Typically a much enlarged version of what you would expect. Big old joker though. At least when pertaining to insects. Well, insects in North America. This is actually one of the largest moss, caterpillar, larva that you will find here in Florida. Every place is obviously unique. And if there wasn't people willing to share their appreciation for things that exist in their lives or location, then we just wouldn't know any different. I'm sure every one of us has a story about wildlife and I truly enjoy reading in my comments all of them. While I've been in Florida my whole life, I still almost every day find things that are still hardly understood by me. By making videos about the creatures I encounter, it helps me understand them much better. Here's a quote I just so happen to remember about one person's interpretation of how we remember. We remember 10% of what we read and 95% of what we teach others. Oh wow, what is that huge caterpillar? So this is one of the largest caterpillars you'll find here in Florida. It is not poisonous and it is not a stinging caterpillar. I will prove that by simply touching these little spines. Now he's definitely feeling some stimulation from that. It is the larva form of the imperial moth. Like I said before, I find new and interesting things almost every day. This is the imperial moth caterpillar. But upon further research, I found that those small hairs you see covering the body are in fact urticating hairs. Like many of the species we've covered that are known for their sting. The dagger moth caterpillar, caterpillar does have lots of small hair follicles. The Iowa moth caterpillar. And the saddleback caterpillar. I've experienced the full effects of those species urticating hairs. While it's said that this imperial moth urticating hairs can cause a reaction or skin irritation, I've never experienced this personally. I didn't know that was even possible until I dove into the world of the imperial moth. The imperial moth belongs to the family of Saturnidae. This family comprises the absolute largest moths in the world, and in my opinion, the most stunningly beautiful. The imperial moth is one of a few Saturnid species in a regional decline throughout the northeastern United States. With some of the New England states lacking records for many decades, reasons for decline have been proposed to be the use of pesticides, insecticides, and herbicides in commercial farming. Many of these large Saturnid moths use moonlight to navigate, and the hallowed street lamps confuse them and mess up their navigation paths. And the introduction of parasitoids in an attempt to control the gypsy moth population has led to an overall decline. This is actually one of the largest moths, caterpillar larvae that you will find here in Florida. Now when they get irritated or threatened, they will excrete a really nasty, foul, almost chemical smelling chemical. Now it has a really well camouflaged bright green coloration and you can find these species on various different plant species like oak trees or even these muscadine grapes. If you want to increase the potential for this species, personally I would simply say it starts with a seed. The imperial moth has a broad range of host plants including everything from coniferous evergreens to deciduous broadleaf trees back go on the vine where I found it and we will let him be. In this case I think specifically a tree seed 